Thank you. The next item of business is a member's debate on motion 7188 in the name of Alexander Stewart on Boys Brigade Junior's 100th anniversary. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now, please? And I call on Alexander Stewart to open the debate. Mr Stewart, seven minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm delighted and grateful uh, for the opportunity to open this member's debate uh, this evening. This autumn, the Boys' Brigade in Scotland is celebrating 100 years of the Boys' Brigade Junior Section. From its formation in Glasgow on the 4th of October 1883 by Sir William Alexander Smith and up until 1917, the Boys' Brigade only catered for boys aged over 12. However, Deputy Presiding Officer, in September 1917, Brigade Council set up the Boy Reserve to cater for boys aged between 8 and 11. The mission of the Boy Reserve was the advancement of Christ's kingdom among boys and the training of suitable recruits for the Boys Brigade. In the early days, the Boy Reserves, uh, they saw a notable increase in attendance at Sunday schools in the churches that had adopted this section and the number of companies operated by the Reserve continued to grow. By 1918, there were almost 1,500 members of the reserve across the UK, with 59 sections uh, being formed in the first session of 1917-1918 for the original, uh, and there are 25 of those still remaining uh, today. In 1926, the Boys' Brigade uh, Reserve merged with the Boys' Life Brigade uh, to be known as the Life Boys. Uh, with this amalgamation, members increased from more uh, than 30,000 in the early 1930s up to 70,000 in the 1950s. And in 1966, the Life Boys became a full part of the brigade uh, as the junior section, and the name, which was in, instead in interpreted to be temporary, uh, remains still today uh, and holds true. Deputy Presiding Officer, members of the juniors have been marking their milestone through 2017 by including taking part in Junior 100 Challenges and young people are encouraged to compete at 100 challenges including activities such as taking part in a world record attempt, learning from first aid skills, raising £100 for a local charity and trying a new sport. Many of these have been actively uh, engaging uh, across the country over the last few months. Members have also got the opportunity uh, to be creative, learning new skills, exploring and being adventurous, whilst at the same time striving to support their local communities. And ongoing celebrations have also involved looking back at the heritage of the juniors, uh, showing some of the, and sharing some of the stories uh, of the current celebrations and looking forward to the next 100 years. Primarily, the Boys' Brigade Junior Section provides a fun and safe learning environment for children between the age of 8 and 11. The programme consists of five areas, body, mind, spirit, community and collaboration. Uh, and these all take place uh, and ensure that they have the opportunity to learn and to grow. The programme enables the youngsters to take teamwork uh, and responsibility uh, that gives them the opportunity to grow and develop in their roles. Juniors also have the opportunity to go on camps and residential trips. And indeed, for some, that might be the first time that they're away from home for an evening. Throughout the time in the junior section, youngsters are able to gain badges and recognition for their participation uh, in uh, simple activities. And this is a real form of motivation uh, and gives a visual, tangible record of their achievement. And many of them wear their badges with real pride. Membership of the Boys Brigade offers young people so much more uh, to excel in new skills and talents, to explore, uh, to deliver, uh, and to provide new opportunities that they can do with fun. As I said in my motion, Deputy Presiding Officer, the Boys Brigade also uh, is to be commended and congratulated in trying to gel this team approach the participation in sport, activities, and it's crucial for children and young people's physical and mental uh, thinking and tackling childhood obesity and also bridging the gap uh, between the attainment. The Boys Brigade is a, a Christian youth organisation and it's committed to fun and safe learning environments and as a result, 
the majority of the members benefit from a church-based premises and share the use of equipment. And that is why, in many cases, uh, expenditure is kept low. As a result of this positive merge, uh, the Boys Brigade Junior Section, we now have a 1,400 and 14,900, with 5,010 members being in Scotland. As a past battalion president of Perth and Kinross uh, District and the current battalion president of Stirling and District Boys Brigade, I am proud and I have witnessed, Deputy Presiding Officer, many of these youngsters at, at opportunities to grow and to be very proud and confident. And as they excel, they become very capable young adults. Indeed, an example of this is a young member from the Boys Brigade Company within the Stirling area, uh, who, whose name is James and who joined the local group several years ago. Although now in his late teens, uh, his mother reflected to the directors of the Boys Brigade on how his time in the junior section had helped her son progress. Uh, and these are her own words uh, by permission of the Boys Brigade. The junior section provided a well-balanced programme of activities, including trying different sports and drill, and of course, the introduction to camp and the first day away from home. In three years, James did not miss a single Boys Brigade meeting. There can be no better testament to the programme and the leaders than that. As a parent, I appreciated the Boys Brigade for providing so many varied opportunities in a safe and structured environment and its leaders who gave over their time and their talents uh, and they became real role models uh, for the youngsters. In concluding, Deputy Presiding Officer, I am proud of the organisation and what it stands for. It has unlocked and continues to unlock the potential of youngsters and I wish it continued success. I have much pleasure in speaking this evening and commend and congratulate all who have worked in the past, the present, and who will continue in the future to ensure that the Boys Brigade goes from strength to strength. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Open debate, speeches of four minutes, please. I call Fulton McGregor, followed by Maurice Corrie. Mr. McGregor, please. Thank you, President Officer, and thanks to Alexander Stewart for bringing this uh, debate forward uh, to the Chamber. I myself went through the Boys Brigade as a youngster, the 13th Coat Bridge to be exact, a company unfortunately no longer in existence. Uh, and I went through all the sections and have many fond memories of my time in the junior section, which is what inspired me uh, to put my name down to speak in today's debate. Members may also remember towards the end of last session I hosted an exhibition here at the Parliament for the Boys Brigade uh, in Scotland and the motto for that week was, and I'll quote, the Boys Brigade is a challenging politicians from across the political spectrum to support its hashtag Team Player Scott campaign, working together to recognise the vital role that youth organisations have in promoting a healthier Scotland through sport and play opportunities for young people. So this does seem to be an ethos that uh, has prevailed, as I can recall, over 20 years ago, and that's been generous, uh, getting involved in football, badminton, and even chess, and uh, while others uh, within the, the same company were perhaps getting involved in music or running or other activities, so a wide range of activities, as mentioned uh, by, by Mr Stewart. It's clear that organisations like the Boys Brigade and the Girls Brigade can help meet national outcomes in relation to health and education. Many children of a junior section age will be facing challenges in their own home situations and attending BBs can be a refuge for them and also give them another person to speak to about school or other issues. And it's, uh, it wouldn't be uncommon for uh, an officer in the Boys Brigade or, or perhaps uh, someday in another organisation to, to take up uh, an advocacy position for a young person uh, perhaps dealing with a school issue. The BBs and other voluntary organisations can carry out community work in a, in a non-confrontational way that's hard for um, you know, local authority providers to do. Uh, they can or are involved with things like youth offending, um, sectarian and hate issues. And I say that as, as uh, earlier today, the, you know, the, the, the Justice Committee discussed taking forward the, <coughs> the members' uh, bill on the repeal of the Anti-Social Behaviour at Football Act. And I, I think even back to, to my time in, in leading a boys' brigade in Coat Bridge, most people there were uh, either Celtic or Rangers fans, and some of the work that was done around that um, work around healthy relationships um, from an early age and I think the junior section, I'm commenting that junior section is uh, officers within the BBs would talk to, to boys from an early age about what's a healthy relationship and a respectful relationship 
and of course developing confidence, self-esteem and freedom of thought. And one of the things I remember from the junior section was being encouraged to think independently uh, and uh, always analyse information. And it did actually strike me years on, um, particularly during the, the, the referendum in 2014, as I'd kept in touch with a lot of uh, people who I'd went to the Boys Brigade with, either directly or through the new medium of Facebook, just how passionate people had been in the BBs were either, you know, I'll, I'll just say for talking sake, 50% were yes and 50% were no, but all were able to formulate a, a really good uh, argument. And, I, and I, I couldn't help but think at that point, you know, um, I wonder how much of, of being involved in the, the Boys Brigade had, had contributed to that. So, and, and also as well, you know, even when I had the, uh, the, the exhibition, you know, it was clear that there was many members across all the different political parties uh, had a Boys Brigade background uh, or, and also a Girls Brigade background. And um, I, I think that maybe the BBs has, has done something that's often difficult to do in the chamber and, and, and unite us all. So our hat, we must take our hats off to them for that. So the next 100 years, uh, I think the, the BBs and the junior section are a, a modern organisation, a law, as, uh, as Mr Stewart said, a law rooted to church ethos. Membership, uh, as far as I, I recall, is not dependent upon religion or ethnicity, and that was certainly the case, uh, as I said, when I was there. Perhaps is only as a, a sort of personal uh, interest, and, you know, by no means am I uh, saying this as a, in a formal capacity in, in talking to the Boys Brigade, but... Um, it maybe is time to think about as we move forward after 100 years, is it time to look at a, a merge of the Girls' Brigade or find, another, or find other ways that we can, um, you know, include girls and, and boys in the Girls' Brigade, so include over the two sections, and I think yeah, that's, that's sort of a personal view um, more than anything else. But again, thanks to the member for bringing this forward, and, and well done to uh, the BBs and the junior section as we move forward, and um, I've certainly got a lot from it, and I hope that that everybody else can continue to do so. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr McGregor. I call Maurice Corrie. We're followed by Ian Gray. Mr Corrie, please. Thank you, Deputy Designing Officer. <clears throat> I'd like to begin by thanking um, Alexander Stewart for bringing this forward, this motion forward for debate today um, on a, a very important event uh, in the life and time <coughs> of the Boys Brigade's junior age group. I'd also like to add my own congratulations to the Boys Brigade um, <coughs> uh, age group, which is reaching its 100th year anniversary, and it's good to see some of the representatives here of the Brigade today in the public gallery, and I'd like to thank you personally for all the work you've put into it as well over the years. I know how valuable it is. Having been a member of the uh, Territorial Army, I know, and on um, helping with cadets, the Army cadets, I know how valuable the experience and the, the amount of time that um, people give, and including parents, to the organisations. For the past 100 years, as the motion notes, being a member of the Boys Brigade has offered children and young people, not just here in Scotland, but, the rights, but right across the world, the chance to excel in new skills or talents, to explore, discover new things and provide opportunities, and above all, to have fun. So it is appropriate that to celebrate the past 100 years of the junior section, more than 5,000 members of the Boys Brigade Juniors Age Group here in Scotland are doing the what the organisation has been doing successfully for the past 100 years. This is by encouraging its members to try out new things, to take up opportunities, to learn new skills and talents that will not only benefit themselves, but also the wider communities they live in, and also to become good citizens. The West Scotland region I present is home to, a do to dozens of boys' brigade companies uh, with junior sections, all of which are doing great work. For example, in Helens Ren, my region, the Boys Brigade Junior Section offers a weekly programme of activities to 8 to 11 year olds each Wednesday, in addition to the local competitions and special events they run. The members not only come from the town itself, but also the surrounding villages in the area. In the last year, youngsters have had the chance of ex to experience several special events, which have included visits to the fire and lifeboat stations, as well as an excursion to the Denny Ship Tank Museum in Dumbarton. There is also the Vale of Leven Boys Brigade Junior Section, which meets weekly at Bon Hill Church and is taking part in the Junior's 100 Challenge as part of the big birthday celebrations. They are encouraging their children to take part in the 100-year celebration by completing 100 different challenges. And the members have so far looked back at Dunkirk as part of their programme, and they've even got, got the chance to meet a World War II veteran who served in, at Dunkirk earlier this year. It is worth mentioning that, of course, as with all voluntary organisations, the Boys Brigade only, is only able to function correctly due to the massive support and help that it is provided by its 3,500 adult volunteers, and as I said, some who are represented here tonight in the gallery, and we're very, very grateful for the work and dedication they give. 
And it would be remiss of I me mean, not to mention the Vale Leven Boys Brigade without mentioning one of the section's adult volunteers, Mrs. Mary Birch, who received the British Empire Medal for her voluntary work with the Boys Brigade um, and working also with Mary's Meals and other community groups. The Boys Brigade as a whole is a great credit to Scotland and an institution which has served our young people so well over the years. And finally, Deputy Presiding Officer, I am sure along with the entire chamber tonight, we wish all the best to the Brigade and also the junior section for the next 100 years of his existence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corey. I call Ian Gray to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Mr. Gray, please. Uh, thank you uh, very much, President Officer, I, and let me add my congratulations to Mr Stewart for bringing forward this evening's debate. Uh, when it comes to the Boys' Brigade, I fear I am rather the black sheep of my family. Uh, my grandfather, father, all of my uncles, brothers-in-law, uh, all of them were BB officers. Uh, in fact, most of them uh, were BB captains. Uh, uh, I uh, am afraid uh, reached... Uh, the, the rather lowly heights of Lance Corporal uh, in my time uh, as a boy. But throughout my youth, I was certainly a member of the Boys' Brigade, and that began uh, by uh, membership or with membership of the Life Boys. Um, in fact, I, I think I, uh, through those BB connections, sneaked in uh, a year early, around seven, uh, and joined the 21st Leith uh, Life Boys based at Ebenezer United Free Church. Uh, set right in the heart of Leith. Um, so my experience uh, of the junior section goes back quite far through the 100 years, not quite back to the boy reserves pre-1926, uh, which is probably just as well because uh, I did find a, 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 some advice to leaders of the boy reserves in the very early days of the juniors. Uh, and the advice goes like this, one minute late on parade should disqualify the boy from attending and no excuse, however good, should allow the boy to remain. Strictness to the point of severity on this point makes the percentage of perfect attendance so much higher. Fortunately, uh, even by the time that uh, I had joined the Life, by, Life Boys, a slightly more enlightened attitude uh, to di discipline uh, had begun to prevail. My time, though, did span a couple of important historical changes uh, in the, the century of history uh, of the juniors. Firstly, uh, while I was a life boy, uh, we did become the junior section, and I remember uh, that change. Looking back on the history, clearly there were some important organisational changes involved then. Uh, for us, the main change was we stopped uh, wearing that slightly strange sailor's hat uh, and began to wear a hat which at the time uh, bore more than a passing resemblance to Thunderbirds, uh, uh, I think, in all our minds. But I was also part of the introduction of something Mr Stewart referred to, which was the recognition of achievement uh, in the juniors, not originally through badges, but through coloured lanyards. Uh, and that was uh, because uh, that was an idea which was introduced by a, a, a particular uh, leader uh, in the juniors or in the life boys at the time, the legendary or perhaps notorious but certainly fear, uh, fearsome Miss Gibling uh, of uh, Leith Battalion. She introduced the idea of coloured lanyards to mark achievement and piloted them in the Leith Battalion, uh, including the company I was in, and they then became generalised throughout the life boys and then transformed into the badges. Uh, which to this day are used to mark achievements in different sectors. Uh, and it's also worth noting, I think, that uh, that important character in uh, the history of the juniors was a woman, because uh, looking back at the history too, it is clear that very early on, indeed in the days of the boy reserves, it became clear uh, that many of those coming forward as instructors were women, and there was a certain reluctance to accept that, uh, but they had to be accepted. They were accepted initially just as uh, honorary instructors, uh, but later became official lady instructors. Uh, and uh, uh, later on, I think it is worth noting uh, the great contribution to the junior section which women leaders have done. In my own case, that means mentioning uh, Ruth Johnson, who was the leader of uh, my life boy and junior section a company and a big influence on me uh, as a young boy. In fact, 
I met Ruth Johnson uh, most recently, only a few weeks ago, and it's clear to me that uh, she still exercises a certain authority over me, perhaps second only to my mother. It's also clear to me that she must have been an awful lot younger in those days uh, than I had understood, uh, because she is still, to a degree, uh, going strong and has contributed throughout her life. I think that the uh, junior uh, 100 challenge is worth mentioning too, because it really does, I think, uh, go with the grain and the tradition of the juniors. The, the challenges which are there uh, go from the, the kind of sublime to the, the ridiculous, from learning a circus skill to meeting your MSP. And they also go from some of the activities like spending a night under canvas, which are traditional uh, for the juniors, to very new ones about getting 100 Facebook likes. Uh, it's been, I think, a tremendous hundred years for the junior section. It's been an important part of my formation for good or ill, and I'm sure that it will be uh, for young men and now young women too for a hundred years to come. Thank you, Mr. Gate. You remind me how much I learn about individual members' backgrounds in these members' debates. I don't know if you were ever a life boy. We're about to find out, Mr. McMillan. You're the last speaker in the open debate. Thank you very much, uh, Signing Officer. No, I wasn't a life boy, but uh, I was a member of the junior company uh, of First Port Glasgow Boys Brigade. Uh, I do congratulate uh, Alexander Stewart in securing this first members' debate uh, of this uh, new parliamentary year. And uh, I, I do note uh, Alexander Stewart's uh, declaration of interest that he makes. Uh, and, uh, and certainly, I wanted to speak in this because uh, I was a member of the First Port Glasgow Boys Brigade. And like uh, uh, Fulton, uh, sadly, uh, that company is no longer in existence. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my time uh, in, the, in the junior section and it certainly was an opportunity uh, to learn uh, as well as also run about and, pl and play and, and have some fun and also burn off some energy. And presenting also, uh, the boys brigade, whether it's the, the anchor boys, the junior section, the company section or the senior section, then I, I generally am pleased to actually highlight the positivity that the boys brigade actually provides but also the opportunities that the boys brigade provides to all of its members and also to all of our communities. Whether it's team building, whether it's sport, whether it's charity activity, uh, helping people become good citizens, and the many other activities, uh, the Boys Brigade actually delivers in every single constituency in the country, across the UK, and also globally. The Boys Brigade has been a force for good, and with the junior section now being 100 years old, I believe this is a huge cause for celebration. Now, I mentioned a few moments ago about the learning and uh, charity. Now, members uh, will know that they've probably heard it once or twice that uh, I am the parliamentary piper and have the privilege of actually piping at many events. Now, this summer alone, uh, during the, the Pipathon 2017 uh, charity event, the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo, and, and yesterday piping at the opening ceremony of the new Queen's Ferry Crossing, which came in at £245 million under budget. Uh, but I started, I started learning uh, the pipes in the first Port Glasgow Boys Brigade Junior section. We don't know that tune. Perhaps you'll play it sometime. <laughs> I'm sure I may. Uh, I, certainly, uh, I, I started uh, learning the pipes in the, in the first Port Glasgow Junior section. And uh, growing up in Port Glasgow, whilst a huge amount of industrial change was happening around me, uh, I started out on this journey uh, into piping. And it was a good way to actually distract me from what actually was taking place within uh, my community. But the learning and the education in the Boys Brigade uh, was certainly useful and it also provides life skills forever. Now, I dare say that uh, all youth organisations uh, will say that they provide the same uh, as part of their offering, and they do. Uh, and, but I certainly am happy to promote all of the youth organisations that work within our communities and also in uh, our constituencies. And uh, certainly one of the things that I have taken a huge amount of uh, privilege in uh, at being an MSP was in May of 2014, I was asked to take the, the inspection of the 2nd Gurek uh, Boys Brigade. And uh, it was the first time I'd, I'd ever taken an inspection. Obviously, I'd, I'd performed uh, in them uh, for many times before, but certainly taking an inspection. And it generally was a, a huge privilege, and it certainly it was a, an honour to actually do it. Uh, a few months later, when I took part in a debate uh, in the run-up to the referendum, that was a bit more bruising, I hasten to add. <laughs> but uh, but the, the inspection was uh, fabulous. But certainly the, the charity work uh, of the Boys Brigade is a mainstay. And uh, I, I do remember that uh, in one of the, the, the events that uh, I, I obtained a certificate uh, in recognition of raising the priceless sum of £5 uh, for a, a local organisation. 
Now, I think with inflation, that's obviously increased to 100. Uh, but, uh, but it certainly was something that and I actually kept that certificate up until uh, only uh, a couple of years ago. But, presenting officer, uh, I'm delighted to wish the Boys Brigade Junior Section a very happy birthday. I'm proud to have been a member of the Junior Section, and I wish it every success for the next 100 years and beyond. And the Boys Brigade motto of sure and steadfast has lasted the test of time and it will going forward. And once again, I would like to thank Alexander Stewart uh, for securing this excellent and timely debate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr McMillan. I now call Mark MacDonald to close for the Government Minister. Seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Uh, th thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by congratulating Alexander Stewart on securing this, the uh, first debate, uh, first members' debate of the new session, and thank all members who have participated in what has been an interesting and positive debate. Uh, I feel I should begin with a confession, Presiding Officer, that uh, unlike the other speakers, I was not a member of the Boys' Brigade. Uh, I came through the uh, scouting movement uh, in my youth. I know, I know, it is, a, it, 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 it is just one of those things, Mr Gray. Um, but it is a privilege to uh, be part uh, of the Boys' Brigade centenary celebrations, which are being highlighted this evening uh, in the chamber uh, by Mr Stewart. It's very clear that the sheer variety of activities uh, carried out by the Boys' Brigade over the 100 years have stood all the young people who have taken part in good stead throughout their lives, including those members who have participated this evening. I was interested to hear from my colleagues Fulton McGregor and Stuart McMillan of their experiences uh, and also the mutual experience of both of the companies that they were part of uh, no longer existing, although I'm sure that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that they were members uh, of those companies. But it does reflect uh, that often um, the, the requirement for us to ensure that we have volunteers continuing to take part in order to ensure that these opportunities remain available for young people across Scotland's community. Uh, for many uh, of the young people, being part of a, a, the Boys' Brigade provides them with life lessons, uh, which will not be forgotten and will stay with them into adulthood. And the work of the Boys' Brigade is an important part uh, of the life of Scotland and also complements uh, and contributes uh, to our mission uh, for Scotland as a government. I'll take an intervention from... Mr Fulton. McGregor. Thanks to the Minister for allowing the intervention. It dawned on me after I sat back down that I should have taken the opportunity to um, pay tribute to uh, one of the, the officers that um, was in the junior section when I was there, a Mr English from Coatbridge. I heard the sad news over the uh, summer uh, holidays that he uh, had the summer recess that he had uh, indeed passed away. Very sad news indeed. And I thought when the minister was talking there about volunteers and the work they do, it was a good opportunity uh, to pay my respects and tributes here in the Scottish Parliament. I thank the Minister for allowing me to do that. Well, Minister. I, I'm grateful that I was able to afford Fulton McGregor that opportunity and I think he highlights um, the impact that volunteers who support young people uh, across Scotland have uh, on those young people as they uh, move into adulthood and many uh, of those individuals uh, are not forgotten in terms of the impact that they have had. And we recognise uh, and value the strong contribution that the Boys Brigade and the other uniformed organisations, uh, youth work uh, and the third sector more widely make to promoting equity and improved uh, life chances. Indeed, from the Scottish Government's Children, Young People and Families Early Intervention Fund, we have allocated £60,000 to Boys Brigade Scotland to support the work that they do across the communities of Scotland. Now, at the heart of all that the Boys Brigade does is building confidence, capacity, resilience and skills, uh, whilst recognising, capturing and celebrating young people's achievements, a point which uh, Ian Gray uh, highlighted. Uh, they're supporting thousands of young men to be the best they can be, uh, which in turn will lead to Scotland continuing to flourish in the future. Now, it's no secret that this government wants to see the poverty-related attainment gap in Scotland close wherever, whenever and however it is measured. And we have a clear educational policy framework in place to give children and young people every chance to succeed based on the foundations of getting it right for every child, curriculum for excellence and developing young young workforce. Now, while we know there are challenges there can be challenges for children within the classroom. We recognise the challenges which some children face are rooted well outside the school gates. And therefore, support for children and families from early years through to post-18 is crucial. And that work doesn't start and end in the classroom. It continues in a young person's journey into further education and the workplace. The most effective work goes beyond the school gates and into the local community. The true breadth 
of education in Scotland. So we recognise the role that youth work uh, can play in relation to that, particularly uh, highlighting the work of the Boys Brigade in this area, uh, engaging young people uh, in areas which the education sector can sometimes struggle to reach, offering a large chunk of the acknowledged 80% of children and young people's learning that takes place outside of school, and also engaging families and communities in a range of opportunities to support ambitions for young people. Through youth work opportunities such as being a member of the Boys Brigade, children and young people can, for example, be introduced to science, technology, engineering and maths activities where they participate in fun, enjoyable, practical experiences outside of the formal classroom setting and without at first realising that what they're doing relates directly uh, to the subjects mentioned. Uh, realising the breadth of opportunities that these experiences bring can encourage and inspire young people to take up further studies in science, technology, engineering or maths subjects thus leading to a positive career path. For example, as you may know, the, in the Uniformed Youth Work Organisations, uh, Boys Brigade, Girls Brigade, Girl Guides and Scouts, members undertake a range of outdoor learning activities. Uh, I recognise that this helps support uh, team building and also links in to this government's aspiration to increase and improve uh, outdoor learning experiences for young people across Scotland. So I recognise the valuable role that the Boys Brigade plays uh, in promoting and enhancing young people's confidence, capacity and resilience, uh, which impacts on attainment and achievement. Uh, youth work in particular can support young people at risk of disengaging from education, and we know youth work changes lives, and there is increasing evidence telling us this. Uh, youth work provides young people with a safe and nurturing environment where they can share their talents and skills, have fun, and learn new things. Uh, thanks to the talents and skills of thousands of youth workers across Scotland, including those working within the Boys Brigade companies, a great many of whom are volunteers, our young people can be supported and nurtured to be the best that they can be. Indeed, some of those volunteers are young people themselves. Um, by helping their peers to be all they can be, they are giving back to their communities. Within the Boys Brigade, uh, these volunteers can be young leaders, uh, some of whom may be the only positive male role model in that particular young person's life. Uh, these young leaders also ensure that the valuable work of the Boys Brigade continues into the next generation. So I would like to give a personal thank you to everyone involved in the Boys Brigade, especially to those who give their time as volunteers. We need them to utilise their skills and expertise with children, young people, adults, families and communities to support this crucial work and help with our wider aspirations to improve outcomes for children and young people. We need them to utilise their skills and expertise with children, young people, adults and families and engaging them in activities that will increase confidence and self-esteem so they can realise their full potential. And we need them to utilise their skills and expertise with children, young people, adults, families and communities to recognise the difference they can make to their lives through the work they do with them. As a government, we know that youth work changes lives for the better and can give young people the skills they need and indeed deserve to succeed in life. And Scotland is fortunate to have a vibrant youth work sector engaging hundreds of thousands of young people in fun, challenging and progressive learning activities every week. The Boys Brigade is a crucial part of that youth work landscape. Uh, it matters to us uh, that they continue to do the strong work that they do to support young people across the communities of Scotland. So I would just like to congratulate everyone involved in the 100th anniversary of the Boys Brigade, uh, give my full support to the motion brought by Alexander Stewart and wish the Boys Brigade all the very best for the next 100 years. Presiding officer. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.